Let's take a look at the uh, even problems on page 80, pages 87 and 88, and we're looking at uh, 6 through 32, every other even. So hopefully I'll remember it's every other even. Maybe I'll just circle those. So 6, 10, 14, 18, 22, and 26. Whoops. And... 30. Okay, so let me run through those and then I'll get to the ones that involve a little bit more work. These are more, many of these are direct substitution. So in number six, uh, where's my pen? There you are. In number six, we're finding the limit as x approaches negative two of x to the fifth. We know that x to the fifth is a power function. It is a continuous function, so we can find the limit by direct substitution. So I substitute negative two in place of x and negative two raised to the fifth power is negative 32. So that function is approaching a y value of negative 32, a continuous function. So in this case, the function value is equal to the limit. In number 10, we have another continuous function. It is a cubic function. And so we know that if our function is continuous, the limit equals to the y value. So we have three times one to the third minus four times one squared plus three. Let's see if I can do the arithmetic. 3 minus 4 plus 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6 minus 4 is 2, is the y value that we'd be approaching in that particular case. In number 14, uh, there is a variable in the denominator, and in number 14 we do have a rational function, so I'm concerned that I might be hitting a discontinuity. But when I substitute 3 into the denominator, I do not get 0, so I'm not approaching the discontinuity. The discontinuity would occur at x equal to negative 3. So in this case, I can use direct substitution. 2 times 3 minus 5 over 3 plus 3. So that's 6 minus 5 over 6. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So this graph would be approaching a y value of 1 6 as we move towards an x value of 3. Number 18, we have a power function, cube root of, and that is a continuous function, so we can use direct substitution. So we have the cube root of 4 plus 23, so that gives me the cube root of 27, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So in that case, if we were to look at that graph, as we go towards the next value of 4, we approach a y value of 3. Number 22, we have a sine function. A sine wave is a continuous function. Therefore, the, the limit is equal to the function value. So I can use direct substitution. So I have the sine of pi times 1, which is pi over 2. We know that pi over 2 is 90 degrees. We know that sine is the y value, so we have 0, 1 is our coordinates in the unit circle, so the y value is 1. Moving on to number 26. In number 26, we see that cosine is a continuous function, so the limit is equal to the y value, so we have the cosine whoa, of 5 pi over 3. And 5 pi over 3, remember from our unit circle, pi over 3 is here, which is a 60 degree angle. We have 2 pi over 3 here. We have 4 pi over 3 here. And we have 5 pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant. 5 pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant. And in the First and the fourth quadrant, the cosines are positive, so the cosine of pi over 3 will equal the cosine of 5 pi over 3. We said pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And then finally, number 30, um, E and sine are continuous functions, and we're approaching 0, so we can use direct substitution, so E to the 0 times sine pi times 0 is 0, e to the 0 is 1, the sine or the y value at 0, y value at 0 is 0, and 1 times 0 is 0, so if we were to look at the graph, we would see that as we go towards an x value of 0, we approach a y value of 0. 
All right, let's get to the ones that require us to do some algebraic manipulations. So on the same, same section, we are, let me move this so I can see it as I move it down. Let's put that right there. Nope, right there. Move it down. And let's take a look at number 56. In number 56, we uh, are always going, in every problem, we're going to try to use direct substitution. So I'm going to try to substitute zero, but that gives me zero in the denominator. So now it's the time for manipulation. Now when I checked uh, a lot of students, when I check a lot of students' homework, uh, here's, I want you to listen very carefully to what I noticed that students mess up on. So I have 3 plus x minus the square root of 3. Now because I have these radicals, I'm going to rationalize, in this case, the numerator. I'm trying to remove the discontinuity. I'm hoping that that x is going to divide out. All right, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, which is the square root of 3 plus x plus, there's the key to the conjugate, square root of 3, and I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the same number so that actually I'm multiplying the expression by a representation of the number 1. So when I multiply radical times radical, so here's, here's the big thing right here. I keep the limit statement. I can't just make it disappear and do the algebra on its own. It's all one big mathematical statement. So when I multiply, I drop the radical and I get 3, excuse me, 3 plus x. When I multiply the radical by the, by the positive root 3 and then this radical by the negative root 3, that's why we're using the conjugate so that the middle term cancels or undoes each other and makes zero. So that's gone. The radical is gone. Then I'm going to multiply negative square root 3 by positive square root 3, and that's going to give me negative 3. In the denominator, I'm going to leave that expression undistributed. So x times the conjugate that I created. Now notice I'm still keeping the limit. I have I don't drop that limit statement until um, I remove the discontinuity and do the um, the direct substitution. So here three minus three undoes each other, and I have x over x times that whole quantity, square root of three plus x plus square root three. The x's divide out. That leaves me a one in the numerator, and now. Now's when I finally can drop the limit because I'm doing the direct substitution, which gives me 1 over 3 plus 0 is 3. So I have root 3 plus root 3, which is not root 6. This is 1 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 3 makes 2 square roots of 3. And I don't need to rationalize the denominator. So that's number 56. All right, let me clear the screen and jump into number... In fact, let's do this. Let's do fit to width, and that gives me a little bit more space to work. So number 59, 59, 59. There you are, 59. Um, I think I actually did this in another video, so I'll go ahead and do it again. Um, so in number 59, I have a complex fraction. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it so I don't have what I call the slanty fraction bar. So this is 1 over 3 plus x minus 1 third over, I forgot to write the limit, x, and we're finding the limit as x goes to 0. Again, we know that direct substitution will not work because it gives me 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to keep the limit, keep the limit, keep the limit, because I haven't done direct substitution yet, and I'm going to get a common denominator in the numerator. Now to get that common denominator, I'm going to multiply 3 times 3 plus x. That's my common denominator. So over here, I'm going to create a parallel fourth grade math problem. I call it the Miss Oliver problem because Miss Oliver taught me how to do fractions. So I have 1 over 5 minus 1 over 3. So when I was in the fourth grade and I wanted to find a common denominator, I would multiply 5 times 3. I would write it as 15, but I'm, I'm trying to keep our problems parallel. So in the fourth grade, in order to um, get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply the, this denominator by 3 and this numerator by 3. So that's going to give me a 3. And then 
minus, and then I'm going to do the same thing. In order for this to have a denominator of 15, I multiply by 5 in the denominator, multiply 5 in the numerator, and that's going to give me a 5. I'm going to do the same thing over here with my work. I'll keep it orange. So I'm going to multiply this denominator by 3 and this numerator by 3, and 3 times 1 is 3. And then there is, just like I had in the fourth grade math, there's my minus, and then multiply the second fraction by x plus 3 in the denominator, x plus 3 in the numerator, and 1 times x plus 3. Make sure you keep that parentheses or you're going to have real trouble in River City. Now the next thing that Miss Oliver taught us to do was when we divide by, let's say, a whole number, we have to put a, our helps to put a 1 under it. So if I had, for example, another parallel problem, 2 thirds divided by 7, I would put a 1 underneath that so I could realize that that's 2 thirds times 1 over 7, because when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. All right, so let's take it back over to algebra, because algebra is just glorified arithmetic. So I'm going to keep my limit, because I have not done direct substitution yet. Make sure you keep your limit. So that'll be negative x minus 3, and the ne positive 3 and negative 3 undo each other. So I have a negative x in the numerator over 3 times 3 plus x. Multiply by the reciprocal, 1 over x. The x's divide out. I can remove the discontinuity. And since I've removed the discontinuity, I can substitute the 0, and I have in the numerator, don't forget the negative, negative 1 over 3 times 3, which is 9. And so that's the y value that this function would be approaching if we were to look at the graph. Uh, the next number is number 56, 59... Um, I'm not going to do 60 because 60 is exactly the same problem as 59 with different numbers in it. You can use solution manual to figure that out. So the next number is number 61, but I'm going to do 62 because 62 and 61 are basically the same. <clears throat> but 62 is a little bit more challenging, more algebraically challenging. It's not hard. I won't, I won't say it's hard, but it's more challenging al algebraically. So I have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x plus delta x squared minus x squared over delta x. So I can't substitute 0 because it gives me division by 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to follow the algebra. So the first thing that the algebra tells me to do is to square the binomial. If you have to do it this way, you have to do it this way. In the summer prep course, I taught a shortcut to squaring a binomial. Just make sure you don't get a binomial. You get a trinomial because you're going to get one, whoops, two, three, four. I keep the limit because I have not done the direct substitution. So I'm going to square the first, double the product, and square the last. So that's how my squaring of the binomial, and that takes care of, of this. Minus, I'm just copying now, x squared over delta x. Keeping the limit, because I have not done the direct substitution yet. So um, I have x squared and negative x squared undo each other. In the terms that I have remaining, so this is a term and this is a term, they all have a delta x, so I can factor a delta x out of the remaining terms, and that'll leave me in the first term with a 2x, and in the second term with a delta x over delta x. I have a removable discontinuity, which allows me to substitute 0 in place of delta x, and when I do, I get 2x. So in this case, I'm not getting a numeric value, um, this is actually, you will learn soon, this is actually a derivative. So just kind of stick that in the back of your mind and don't worry about it other than that.